starts right now. With less than 24 hours until the polls open for Election Day, candidates are making their final pushes across the country. And that's no different here in Texas and here in Bear County. Our Max Massey joins us live downtown. And Max, it has been a busy 24 hours busy 24 hours and in that last 24 hours we have heard from candidates on both sides there in those final pushes in the final hours right before election day we spoke to candidates on both sides and they say these last few hours the last couple days right before election day they can have the biggest factors in winning cases all the way from local courthouses all the way to the white house and those rallies all around the country including here in bear county take a look at some of the local ones that we saw the last 24 hours uh, let's start with yesterday the Republican Party gathered with Senator John Cornyn for his Back the Blue event. Senator Cornyn joined by Congressman Chip Roy, State Senators Donna Campbell and Pete Flores, State Representative Steve Allison, and candidate for Will Hurd's seat in District 23, Tony Gonzalez. And today, the Democrats making their voices heard as well. There was a get out the vote meet and greet with Tom Perez, the Democratic National Committee Chair, MJ Hagar, and Gina Ortiz Jones. Through this last push, we heard from candidates on both sides. Our support for the, the people who stand up and defend our police is through our vote at the ballot box. And while Texans, 9.7 million of us have voted already, we're hoping millions more will go to the ballot box. You can feel it that we're winning these races up and down the ballot in Texas. And that means we have an opportunity. Because the fight never ends, y'all. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. It keeps going. And this is about our kids. And according to 538 of ABC News, the latest Emerson poll has Senator Cornyn at a slight advantage over MJ Hagar, 51% to 47%. And through these last few rallies, the last hours before the election, we heard from candidates on both sides. Tonight, we're going to break down what we heard from Gina Ortiz Jones and Tony Gonzalez. Courtney, David. Thank you, Max. Well, after months of campaigning, there is just one more day until Election Day. A record 94 million Americans have already cast their ballots, according to the U.S. Elections Project. As ABC's Faith Abube reports, both President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden are working frantically to get their voters to the polls tomorrow. After months of bitter campaigning... For President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden, it all comes down to this, getting supporters to the polls. You got to vote. The big thing, you got to go vote Tuesday. President Trump hoping for a huge Election Day turnout. The latest 538 forecast showing he has just a 10 percent chance of winning re-election. But Mr. Trump campaigning at a breakneck pace, holding five rallies on Sunday, wrapping up his day in Florida. The latest ABC News poll shows the race in the Sunshine State is still a toss up with the COVID-19 pandemic defining the contest. On the eve of Election Day, the Biden campaign focusing their efforts on Pennsylvania, a state Trump won by less than a point in 2016. Polls show he's up in the Keystone State, despite the race slightly tightening. It's time for Donald Trump to pack his bags and go home. In an effort to flood the zone, Kamala Harris heading to eastern Pennsylvania with her husband, while Jill and Joe Biden take on the western half. Vice President Mike Pence and President Trump also heading to the battleground state. Meanwhile, Mr. Trump raising eyebrows with this inaccurate comment. We should know the result of the election on November 3rd. That's the way it's been and that's the way it should be. While news outlets often project a winner before all the ballots are in, vote tallies have never been final on election night. In fact, this year, with a record number of early ballots already cast, the final results could take a while to certify. Our response is the president's not going to steal this election. It could take several days to count votes in some states like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, but in other battleground states like North Carolina, Florida, Arizona, we could get some early answers. Those states expect to have most, if not all, their early votes and in-person votes counted on election night. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. And as part of election coverage, we're doing five live streams this week. That starts tonight at 7 with an Election Day preview. And we'll have another live stream tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. after GMSA. You can watch all of these live streams on the KSAT TV app on your smart TV or on KSAT.com. You can also see the full schedule on our website. Just head to the Vote 2020 section. And tomorrow, KSAT.com becomes your Election Day headquarters. Take a look at our homepage. 
It's going to look a little different tomorrow because you're going to be able to see results from key races as well as charts that break down those results. In the meantime, police say a driver was speeding before a deadly crash on the far south side. And this noon, we are learning more about the two people who died. The medical examiner's office says 45 year old Angelic Coronado was one killed in that crash. The crash happened just after one Saturday morning in the 500 block of Peaceful Lane. Bear County Sheriff's deputies say a man and a woman were speeding when the driver lost control, drove through a property and then hit an electrical pole. Investigators say both people inside were thrown from their SUV and pronounced dead at the scene. The other victim has not been identified. And in GMSA at 9 a.m., we incorrectly reported the identity of a person killed in a crash over the weekend. The accident happened in the 5500 block of De Zavala Saturday night. A man who has not been identified was killed in that accident, and we incorrectly identified the victim as a 38-year-old woman. We do regret that error. Police say a man flashed a gun at a cashier during a robbery on the west side. Now officers hope you can help them identify this suspect. Officers say last Friday the suspect walked into a store on Highway 90 and Loop 410. Take a look at your screen and see if you recognize this man. According to police, the suspect walked up to the front counter and demanded money while showing the cashier a weapon. The suspect left before police arrived. It's unclear how much cash he got away with. If you can help solve this case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Anyone who provides tips that leads to an arrest may be eligible for a cash reward. This noon, still no word on what caused a fire on the city's north side. San Antonio fire crews say flames broke out just before 3 this morning inside a laundry room at an apartment complex in the 100 block of Dresden. Firefighters were able to knock down the fire quickly. However, those flames caused around $30,000 in damages. A local organization wants veterans to feel appreciated this upcoming Veterans Day, so they're asking people to write letters. How you can participate still ahead. The Cowboys had a shot at their first road win, but then they fumble it away. Highlights coming up in sports. And how was Election Day looking? Plus, what's going on with Hurricane Ada down there in the Caribbean? We've got the updates coming up. Metro Health says there are 191 new cases of COVID-19 and there are no new deaths. However, nine backlog deaths reported from July 4th to October 11th were added to the county's death toll. There are 227 people hospitalized locally, 94 in the ICU, 59 are on ventilators. New cases of the coronavirus are soaring across the country, averaging 80,000 cases a day, with new cases rising in at least 48 states. As ABC's Rainer Roar reports, the CDC now issuing new guidance on voter safety and the pandemic, and with final votes being cast tomorrow in the 2020 election. We're now just one day away from one of the most contentious elections in U.S. history and COVID-19, a key issue for voters. I want everybody to know that this is real. This is serious. 23-year-old Lawrence Carpe of Ohio, who battled the virus in the hospital, is out now, but says he is still having difficulty breathing. A record-breaking number of more than 99,000 new COVID-19 cases were reported Friday, the highest single-day total in any country since the pandemic began. Hard-hit El Paso County, Texas, adding a fourth mobile morgue to keep up with the influx of deaths. U.S. Surgeon General Jerome Adams says a vaccine is coming soon Soon, but Americans should follow safety precautions. All indications are that we will have a vaccine uh, by the end of this year, that it is going to get worse temporarily, but we have the power to limit how bad it gets. 47 states are seeing cases go up. 45 have an increase in hospitalizations and 25 are facing a rising number of virus related deaths. New guidance from the CDC says even if you're sick or in quarantine, you are allowed to go to the polls and vote. If you inform poll workers, stay six feet away from others and wear a mask. I do think it's very safe for people to vote uh, in person. Study the ballot beforehand so you don't have to spend a lot of time when you're inside. You can just fill out your vote and walk away. Uh, if people do that, I think we can do this safely without causing a surge of new cases. Different states have specific protocols. In Iowa, voters who are sick with COVID-19 or are isolating will be allowed to vote curbside. In Ohio, they're setting aside space at some polling locations for people who feel sick or have a fever. 
And for anyone who is too sick to get to the polls, at least 38 states are allowing emergency absentee voting so people can participate even during this pandemic. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Outside with live cam, this is one of those days where somebody from the Chamber of Commerce goes and gets their camera and starts snapping pictures <laughs> and then writes an article about how wonderful the weather is. In this San is San Antonio. Yeah. Is that yeah. how that terminology started, Chamber of Commerce Day? Is that the, the story behind I, it? I, I, sounds good. David says so, Works. so I'm going to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good to me. Uh, some uh, big drops in the aquifer today. It's down over a foot, 1.3, 659.6. Kind of a surprise there. And then also, surprise in the polycat. Mold jumped up. It's in the moderate category, despite the fact that it's been dry. Jumped up today. Ragweed is low. We've got an interesting hurricane down in the Caribbean that we need to talk about. We have more on that coming up. Well, in the middle of election season, we need to remember the men and women who fought to keep our democracy alive. A local organization is making sure veterans feel appreciated right now. Vitas Healthcare is asking people to send letters of appreciation to the veterans they assist. This year has been a challenge with COVID-19, and for the older community, it can be emotionally draining. Writing and sending a letter, even just saying thank you, can be really powerful. It is very emotional and you know, reading a letter is, it can be interpreted so many different ways and it can tell a story from far away um, and really just take to heart that it's someone took the time to recognize you and talk to you directly to you um, and write that special letter for you. Veterans Day is next week on November 11th. Vetus is trying to get all of the letters by this Friday. You can mail them to the address on your screen, 8401 Data Point Drive, Suite 300, San Antonio, Texas, 78229. And take the time to write it. Yes. Not do it on a computer. Yes. And print it out. Write it, hand write it. It's always more personal. Oh, sure. Yes. A lost art. Somewhere. And then cursive if you can. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, you know they appreciate that. It's a challenge. It's a great, great program. Speaking of great, the weather. The weather. Well, Justin's great. Too. Oh, thank you. Aw. Uh, yeah, no, the, the He's weather. He's just has, full of compliments yeah, today. Incredible. Hey, very quick, guys, we got to mention David and I did not forget to shave today. Mm -hmm. uh, we are starting No mm -hmm. Shave November. Very important cause. We're going to have places where you can donate. We want you to ask us why we're growing beards because we want to let you know that we're raising money for cancer and we'll have some of that posted. You can go to our website and see more about it. A lot of guys here at the station doing it. So anyway, we'll be growing some beards the next couple of weeks. Just a heads up. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, freeze calendar here. When can we expect our first freeze? Good question. Uh, here in San Antonio, we average about November 30th. As you get up into the hill country, it's typically October 31st to November 6th. That's the range. Now, Rock Springs did get down to freezing last week. Uh, everyone else kind of tapers off as you go south, but uh, far south, we're talking November 28th to December 4th. Uh, you can't take a lot of stock in these numbers. These are just averages, but it gives you a general idea here. And for San Antonio, the earliest freeze we've seen is October 30th, 1917. So it can come early, but the, there is... Uh, there are no freezing temperatures in our forecast, so it's extended forecast. Uh, as we go outside right now, beautiful weather, 70 degrees at the airport. Humidity is at 21%. East southeasterly winds at about 8 miles per hour. And you look at the numbers, uh, this is about as good as it gets. 67 Canyon Lake, 68 Bernie State, 72 Bandera, 70 out there in Hondo, 71 Del Rio, 74 down there in Catula. Still some 60s for Fredericksburg and Rock Springs and the dew points are way down there. We're talking very dry, if not desert air with these dew points in the 20s and 30s. It remains fairly dry next couple days and then we'll start to see an infusion of moisture with some southeasterly winds kicking in by Thursday, Friday, and certainly into the weekend. You'll start to notice the humidity a little bit more. That may eventually lead to some morning clouds, maybe some morning fog as early as Thursday, but more so Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We may start to notice that a little bit more. Still no rain though. Uh, we're getting the moisture back, but there's nothing to really give us lift and give us showers and storms. You look across the state of Texas right now, there's nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing to look at. And it's not just here. The whole country is really pretty quiet. This time of year, you would expect some fronts to get some snow, areas of low pressure. It's just not there. We have some snow up across New England, uh, some lake effect snow up there, but that really is about it. And so election day looks pretty good. This is a look forward to tomorrow. In this area of low pressure out west, we'll move in, create maybe a little bit of rain across the Intermountain West. 
Uh, but other than that, it looks really good for election day for people to get out to the polls. Now we got to talk about Hurricane Ada. It's down there in the Caribbean. This is a major hurricane now. It's uh, looking really nice on the satellite picture here. Winds at 120 miles per hour, gusting to 130. It's moving west at about 9 miles per hour. Could become a Cat 4. So places like Nicaragua and Honduras are going to get slammed by this. It'll move across the mountains, probably weaken a little bit, and then reemerge back out into the Caribbean. This is where it gets interesting. Some of the models down the line want to redevelop this and potentially take it into the Gulf of Mexico. We'll see what happens there. We have some time to watch it. This is Sunday we're talking about. Uh, so we have a good week here, but interesting. 2020 has been an odd year in the tropics. This could be another odd situation, so uh, just a heads up. We'll keep you posted. 74 degrees, 2 o'clock, 77 are high temperature today, and those temperatures will slip into the 60s and eventually 50s tonight, if not 40s by tomorrow morning. 78 on your election day, 81 Wednesday, 81 Thursday, increasing humidity by the weekend, but temperatures stay consistent, and there is no rain in that seven-day forecast, guys. Chill out, 2020. Seriously. Leave us alone. Hashtag chill out. <laughs> chill <Yeah>. out. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Yep. Hey, Ben Danucci had some good moments. Speaking of 2021, getting rid of this year. How about this? Ooh, good moments last night. And then he had some bad, like that one right there, really bad moments last night. Just first start with Cowboys. Got those highlights coming up, you want to call them that. Huh? And a local boxer put on a show for the local boxing dance. Thanks. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Looking like the Cowboys drove a bunch of Sandlot plays to try something new and different. They were starting their third-string quarterback, Ben DiNucci, on the road in the city of brotherly love last night. Dallas looking for their first road win. DiNucci laterals to Cedric Wilson. He laterals to CeeDee Lamb for the double reverse. Lamb gets a block from DiNucci. Gets 19 yards. A few plays later, it's Greg Zerline. That gets the Cowboys on the board from 49 yards out. It's 3-0 Dallas. Philly responds in the final seconds of the, third of the first quarter. Carson Wentz rolls right and hits... Jalen Rager, who just gets the ball over the goal line for the TD. Philly's up 7-3, but the Cowboys defense does something they haven't done all season in the third quarter. Force, actually, the second quarter, forced turnovers late in the half. Wentz buying time, slings it to the end zone. How about that? Interception by the diving Trayvon Diggs. But was he in? Yep, he was in. Shin touched the ground. Cowboys third takeaway of the game. No points over that turnover, but just before the end of the half, that's a 59-yard field goal from Zerline. I like how he read the wind. Looked like a golf shot in the wind, didn't it? That's amazing. Cowboys head in the locker room with a 9-7 lead. Late third, Eagles take the lead back. Wentz with the lob to the end zone for Travis Fulgham. He's got it. Nine-yard touchdown. Philly goes for two. And they convert. They're up 15-9. Same score, fourth quarter. Cowboys 21 yards away from taking the lead. But Danucci is sworn by the Eagles' defensive line. The blitz gets him as well. The ball is loose, gets kicked out of that scrum. That's Rondi McLeod who scoops and scores. That's a 53-yard fumble return for a touchdown. And that was the game clincher. There's your final. Eagles beat the Cowboys 23-9. Dallas and now 2-6 poultry record. Ooh. We just have to take care of the ball. Uh, we, one time we got down the red zone, um, didn't protect the quarterback, uh, and uh, we didn't end up getting any points that drive. And then obviously that last drive, uh, not the last drive, but the, the one where they uh, returned it for a touchdown, um, we were moving the ball well on them and, and um, tried to get them to jump off sides. They didn't call it and uh, lost the ball again. But um, I would say we just—I I, I would say we just got to take care of the ball. Our turnovers, you know, you know, cost us, um, and then we had the big—the big play there that kind of changed the game there in the fourth quarter. But a lot of improvement uh, in a number of areas, so uh, we're definitely moving in the right direction as far as play style and some of the things we're focused on. Uh, clearly, understand what, what this loss does to us, um, but you know, we need to—we need to rally and and get together here and and move on for Pittsburgh. Need some wins. Bad. They get the Steelers next. The undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers Sunday. At least that one's at home. That's good news. Hey, what a night in the Alamo Dome Saturday. More than 9,000 fans were there. They were spread out from the floor to the ceiling to keep people socially distanced at the age of COVID-19. San Antonio's Mario Barros defending his WBA World Superweight Lightweight title against friend and fellow Texan Ryan Carl. When they got into the sixth round, El Azteca went to work. He nails Carl with a straight right and puts him on the canvas. 
There was an accidental headbutt, but the cut opened Carl's forehand and that, or forehead, and that would not stop bleeding. Barros went for the finish right there, connected with a left hook, and he hits the canvas for the second time. Ref stopped the fight. Barros successfully defended his title in front of his hometown fans. After the fight, he talked about being in the bubble the last week in the Marriott Center and fighting back here at home. The bubble was something, you know, I don't want to get used to. <laughs> But, um, I mean, again, it's just part of what's going on right now. And um, I was very thankful, though, to be a part of, you know, the first show back with an audience. And I mean, it felt weird, you know, being at home, but not really at home because, again, I, mean, I couldn't really leave anywhere but the bubble. But, um, you know, I mean, I, I hope, you know, I give, you know, my hometown fans, you know, um, an exciting fight. Uh, and uh, I hope it was worth it for them. He's nice doing so belt, huh? well. Good looking belt. Yeah, it is. That's like a big belt. It's bigger than he is. <laughs> Huge belt. It's amazing. Halloween is over, of course, but that means bring on the holiday season. If you plan to travel this month or next, airports and flights may not be as packed as they usually are this time of year, but that doesn't mean you should let down your guard. What you can do before booking to maximize your safety this holiday season, that's today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. Afghanistan's interior ministry says at least 19 people have died. Nearly two dozen others are injured after attack at Kabul University. The ministry spokesperson says there were three attackers involved when suspects stormed the school's campus today. The attack on the country's largest school lasted for hours. The Taliban issued a statement denying it took part. The attack comes as peace talks continue with the U.S.-backed government in Qatar with the aim to help the U.S. withdraw from Afghanistan. At least 16 people killed in the Philippines as a typhoon named Ghani de devastated the country over the weekend. Thousands of homes were damaged, some even swept away when the powerful storm hit. Officials say sustained winds were up to 140 miles an hour. Search crews are still looking for at least three people who were reported missing after the deadly typhoon. Now to Ada, it has been upgraded to a hurricane. As Justin has said, the storm could bring heavy rain, storm, sur storm surge, and landslides to parts of Central America and the Caribbean. Forecasters say central and northern Nicaragua, as well as a large part of Honduras, could get 15 to 25 inches of rain. Some areas could get as much as 35 inches. Heavy rains might also hit eastern Guatemala, southern Belize, and Jamaica. Well, the Texas Supreme Court is rejecting Republicans' effort to throw out nearly 120,000 votes. A group of GOP activists asked the state's highest civil court to rule that Harris County drive through locations were violating federal law. The Texas High Court denied the petition yesterday. Harris County covers most of Houston and is the country's third most populous county. This is the second time in recent weeks the state Supreme Court has blocked attempts to dismantle drive through voting there. Like everything else in 2020, the coronavirus has also upended the presidential race. That's right. President Trump and Joe Biden have taken very different positions and strategies when it comes to campaigning during the pandemic. With a sharper focus on the health of the country, Emily Schmidt looks at how COVID-19 is impacting the race for the White House. Who would have guessed, counting down the final seconds of 2019, that something else happening that very day would foreshadow the year and presidential election ahead. It was also December 31st when cases of pneumonia, an unknown virus detected in Wuhan, China, were first reported to the World Health Organization. By January 30th, the WHO declared coronavirus a public health emergency of international concern. President Donald Trump said this. Well, everything's really under control. Fast forward three seasons and one thing is clear. COVID-19 is a world public health battle and a political battle. I'm fighting to eradicate the virus, rebuild the economy and save our country from the radical left. So many lives have been lost unnecessarily because this president cares more about the stock market than he does about you know, well-being of seniors. According to Johns Hopkins University, there have been more than 8 million COVID-19 cases in the U.S. since the pandemic began. Leading experts project nearly 400,000 deaths by this February. By mid-October, about 11 million Americans were out of work. And though weekly jobless claims are down from their peak in late March, they're still about four times what they were pre-pandemic. 
President Trump, First Lady Melania, Son Barron, and a number of White House Inner Circle staff tested positive for COVID-19 about a month before Election Day. The president's tweets continued from the hospital, and days later, campaign rallies, large, mostly maskless, resumed, despite the warnings of health officials. If there's anything we should be doing, we should be doubling down in implementing the public health measures that we've been talking about for so long, which are keeping a distance, no crowds, wearing masks, washing hands. I went through it. Now they say I'm immune. I can feel I feel so powerful. Joe Biden's campaign has opted for smaller, socially distanced or virtual events. It's become painfully clear as this careless, arrogant, reckless COVID response has caused one of the worst tragedies in American history. Voters view coronavirus as differently as the candidates themselves. An October CNN poll found 66% of Biden supporters call coronavirus extremely important to their vote, more than three times the view of Trump supporters. There will be no coronavirus vaccine widely available in the U.S. by Election Day, meaning the winner of November's presidential election will still have to deal with a pandemic few could have imagined just one year ago. In Washington, I'm Emily Schmidt reporting. Outside, you know, we've had a few days that have actually felt like fall, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice in the end of October and early November to actually feel like fall. Fall, yeah. Yeah, I, I think we're going to get about two weeks, guys, worth of fall-like weather. I think we kind of deserve it here, right? I mean, it, uh, it has been beautiful the last few days. Weekend was incredible. And we're starting to see some of the leaf changes even here around San Antonio. Take a look. And a picture here. This is out of San Antonio. And you can see the leaves kind of trying to change color there. It's, uh, it's about that time. Uh, I haven't had a report on Lost Maples, but I'm sure we're starting to see some change there too. So beautiful shot. As always, we appreciate it. And they're looking at the temperatures right now. 68 degrees, Bernie State, 71 Boulevard, 71 Randolph, 74 down there in Pleasanton, 70 at Hondo. Feels great outside right now. We've got just a few clouds skirting across the sky, and that's it. Uh, we're not expecting much in the way of cloud cover today. So the forecast, pretty straightforward here. 77 by 4 o'clock, mostly sunny sky. Southeasterly winds 5 to 10. That sunset around 545 tonight. We'll drop down into the 60s, eventually 50s by 10 o'clock hour, and then some 40s by tomorrow morning. Courtney. Thank you so much, Justin. Play-Doh isn't just for kids anymore. The toy brand is set to launch a new line of their famous dough for adults. You got to hear these details after the break. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Hertz is trying to help customers to the polls on election day. The rental car company now offering a free day of rental car service for those who reserve a two day rental for pickup today or tomorrow. Now the idea is to make the polls more accessible for voters. Meanwhile, Alibaba is kicking off their singles day event earlier than usual this year. The annual event is a day of massive sales similar to that of Amazon Prime Day. The Chinese e-commerce giant says they'll offer two checkout periods this year, one from November the 1st through the 3rd and another on a November the 11th, the day they typically hold the shopping holiday. And the CDC is allowing cruise ships to sail again, but that's if they meet certain requirements. As of now, no passengers will be allowed on board. As part of the phased approach, cruise operators will have to conduct simulated voyages and trial runs. Now, participants also have to agree to COVID-19 testing as well, and operators will have to submit to CDC oversight. Cruise operators can only apply for the CDC's new COVID conventional sailing certificate. That's after the trial run is complete. And that's your Cheddar Business to Tech update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. For adults that are finding the child in themselves, Play-Doh is releasing a line that's made for adults and it features appealing grown-up scents. Those scents include overpriced latte and spa day, but also more original aromas too, I guess, like mom jeans, which smells like freshly washed denim, dad sneakers, which gives off the scent of new shoes, lord of the lawn smells like fresh cut grass, and grill king will leave you hungry, smelling like smoky barbecue. The Play-Doh for grown-ups also has more sophisticated packaging. You can find Play-Doh for grown-ups at Amazon and Walmart. 
Which you're one? You're telling us is there is no excuse for not getting out and voting tomorrow if you've used the weather before. You can't use that as an excuse. Tomorrow. That's absolutely true. It looks like it's going to be gorgeous, not only here, but basically across the country. The weather looks really good for election day. It all looks good. 70 degrees so far today. The low this morning, 50 degrees, and the averages are 77 and 55. We're going to be pretty close to average today, which is nice. The records are 88 and 31. So back in 1936 and 1966. Uh, looks like we got some great weather headed our way. Of course, we've got some issues down there in the Caribbean. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a bit. Once again, Justin predicting that. Uh, what, what was the word we had the other day? <laughs> we predicted you were. Yeah, uh, we can now confirm that uh, election day will be very nice. Oh, you're already confirming it. Yes. Wow. Before <laughs> the, the votes are even the numbers in. aren't even in yet, but we <laughs> you're can. You're confirm already confirming it. it. That's wow, some good yes. news. Yeah, I like that's that. something that does not stress me out. It's been it's, it'll be a very stressful week for everyone, but you know I feel like stuff. that's just what we need is some good weather. We can so project. No project. Projection. We can project that election day will be full of sunshine. You went to confirm. <laughs> well, I trust him. Maybe it is a little bit early. I don't know. Uh, let's take a look at the election day forecast. We just talked about it a little bit, there. but uh, oh, here it is. Wow. If you did some voting. Look at you. Well, yeah, those are a lot of empty booths right there. I need to fill those up tomorrow. Uh, that's true. Uh -huh. That's true. Uh, now, you know, instead of, you know, we showed the finger there, but now they give you a little pencil with the, yeah. the oh, yeah. glove. That would be thing. sanitary. Yeah. Uh, 47 degrees tomorrow morning. 72 at noontime. Uh, we'll be at 78, 3 o'clock, and then uh, up into the 80s eventually, and then down into the uh, low 60s, mid 60s by 7 o'clock. Reminder, polls close at 7 p.m. Uh, looking outside right now, we've got a few clouds out there, not many. 70 degrees at the airport, 71 Stinson, 72 Kelly, 71 at Randolph. Light southeasterly wind. Uh, we can see a few of those thin high clouds on the satellite picture. Kind of hard to pick out there, but uh, right on the edge of your screen. These are pretty thin, so the sun's going to shine right through. Not a problem today. 75 Castroville, 75 Pleasanton, 72 in Seguin, 72 right now. New Braunfels, 69 Uvalde, 68 Rock Springs, 74 down there in Laredo. And we talked about the dew points are really dry today, 20s and 30s. So we'll have a slow build with the dew points. So jumping up into the 40s, eventually 50s by the end of the week, and then maybe some 60s by the weekend. That's when you start to feel it a little bit more. And we'll start to probably see some morning clouds, maybe some morning fog, especially towards the end of the week. Uh, we mentioned also that there is just not a lot going on across the country. A little, a little bit of snowfall up there in the northeast, some lake effect snowfall. This is pretty light around Buffalo into parts of New England and Maine, seeing some snow this afternoon. Uh, snow depth across the country. Mm, there is some snow still on the ground as you get up into upstate New York and up there in Maine as well. Parts of Minnesota, still a little bit of snow left over and then in the higher elevations of the mountains, but not a lot of snowpack really anywhere in the country right now. Uh, certainly not here in Texas. Uh, switching gears a little bit, we do have a hurricane, now a major hurricane. That's Ada. Winds are at 120 miles per hour, gusting to 130. It's moving west at about 9 miles per hour. It's getting very close to the Nicaragua Honduras border there, and that's where it's going to have the biggest impact. In fact, this thing could go cat four before it makes landfall. It'll bring a lot of rain there, and uh, it's going to move over the mountainous terrain there in Honduras, then eventually turn to the north and northeast and weaken quite a bit, but it's going to reemerge back out into the Caribbean. And there are some computer models that want to take this north into the Gulf of Mexico or perhaps towards Cuba. And we'll have to wait and see and see if it does indeed reemerge. But if it does, there's potential that it could re-strengthen and move up into the Gulf of Mexico, maybe down the line affecting parts of the United States. It's too early to tell just yet, but 2020 has been a weird season. This would be a sort of weird twist here at the end. But uh, we'll keep an eye on that uh, and keep you posted. We would need to watch out if that did indeed uh, turn out that way. we got plenty of time. 74 degrees at 2 o'clock, 77, 4 o'clock, down to 63 by 8 o'clock. Really nice evening. And uh, 78 tomorrow, 81 on Wednesday, 81 Thursday. Very consistent, even with that added humidity by the end of the week. We may see some more clouds Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The unfortunate part of that forecast is there is no rain. We need some rain in the worst way, and it's just not there. The aquifer is falling. It's been a really dry, feels like last month and a half or so.